Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Metro Health tonight issuing some guidance ahead of the new year. They acknowledge the rise in Omicron cases, and we hear from a local pediatrician on COVID-19 cases in children. Plus, the pandemic also postponing tonight's Spurs game. It kind of sucks just because, you know, really that's the only big sports team we have in San Antonio. Yeah, those stories coming up, but first. It's a story that's continued to show many in San Antonio are willing to help a banner a business also doing what it can to help find li little Lena Keel. Yeah, the search for the three year old now in its 10th day that search also expanding today. Dozens of volunteers with the search and rescue SATX organization searching a field just three minutes away from where little Lena was last seen. She disappeared from a playground at the Villas del Cabo apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road. And today's group of volunteers also brought a canine unit there after getting a piece of clothing of the little girls from her family. And this is as SPAD continues its search and they didn't find anything today, but they plan to search a new location tomorrow morning. And the efforts don't stop there because a local business is sharing its resources to get the word out about Lena. Yeah, they are donating missing persons banners to the businesses to help them keep an eye on this case. And they're already being posted all around town. The night team's John Paul Barajas found one. He's at a restaurant when one of those banners was posted where little Lena was last seen. We're at Moroccan Bites off Evers and Wurzbach Road, and the owners here put up one of those missing person banners of Lena Keel, and that banner was actually donated by another local company, and that local company is making that same offer to anyone else who wants to help in the case. It's a story that's hit all of San Antonio hard, and with authorities still having no leads as to where three-year-old Lena Keel might be, local businesses and organizations are stepping in to help. One of my customers came and he said, I got this for the little girl. I'm like, don't even think about it. Don't even ask me. Just put it on. I mean, whatever we can do. Babies is, it's, I don't know. Babies is everything. Wafa Amarudi's family owns Moroccan Bites. They've had this spanner up for every customer and person driving by to see since Monday, hoping someone with information will come forward. The banner is one of many being donated by a local advertising company, The Creative Mango. We're donating 100 banners uh, free of cost to anyone that wants to come pick one up so they can hang up at their storefront or their residential home. If we all can work together, we can accomplish great things. Marco Garcia says so far they printed 45 and will print more. He adds they still have plenty of banners available for anyone who's interested. The banners say Lena was abducted, but as of right now, SAPD investigators are still calling the case a missing person because they have no evidence she was taken. But one thing remains the same. Lena is missing, and she was last seen Monday, December 20th. No matter who she is, where she is from, what she believes, I don't care, but a kid, a baby, it's hurting. I don't know if you're not a dad yet, but you will feel it is like shredding your chest when you hear something about any baby. And right now, there's a total of $150,000 worth of reward money if you know any information that might lead to Lena's whereabouts. And again, the Creative Mango advertising company says there's still plenty of these banners available for anyone who wants to pick one up. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. This, of course, is a story we will continue to follow on air and online at KSAT.com. We will also send out any breaking news updates about the story to your phone. Just download the KSAT app. Now switching gears as we all get ready for a New Year's Eve celebrations, Metro Health wants us all to be cautious, and that is because Omicron cases continue to rise. In fact, local health officials say that COVID-19 cases increased threefold in Bear County. So Metro Health is urging us to mask up regardless of whether we're vaccinated. And also it's telling us that if we're sick, we should stay home. Now, more people are getting tested for coronavirus, and at University Health's lab, more of those tests are turning out to be positive. During the first full week of this month, University Health saw a positivity rate of 4.6%, okay, 4.6%.
But that number has continued to rise because at the start of this week, that number had jumped to 31 percent. And since these clinics have their own lab, results for these tests are coming in within 12 hours. The Omicron variant is believed to be behind this rapid rise in these cases. Now, if you're vaccinated and boosted, doctors say there is evidence that your symptoms will be minimal if you get COVID. So while we talk about vaccines and boosters, you know, children as young as five years old are eligible to get it. Yeah, federal data is showing a rapid rise in the number of children hospitalized nationally with COVID. A local pediatrician tells an Ike team's Lee Waldman, despite this data, it's still easy for parents to protect their kids. Lee, he's also seen a familiar symptom with the Omicron strain. Tell us more about that. Yeah, the doctor I spoke with said he is starting to see gastrointestinal issues starting to appear similar to what we saw at the start of this pandemic. So if you or your child is having stomach problems, he recommends that you go ahead and get tested. Since the beginning of December, there's been a 50% increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in children. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association. Dr. John Fitch, a pediatrician at Heritage Pediatrics, is seeing an increase in his own office. Over the last couple of weeks, it, it's, it's a little bit of a mini explosion, whereas we were maybe having one or two people that per 100 that we tested positive. It's probably somewhere between... 15 and 25 um, um, percent that are positive now. There was a similar increase back in September with cases of the Delta variant. The Department of Health and Human Services is showing the number of children hospitalized in the country with confirmed or suspected cases of COVID has more than doubled in a month from 800 to 2100. When you have a lot more people being diagnosed, you're going to see more hospitalizations. While he's seeing a greater number of cases in his office, they haven't been severe enough to require hospitalization. We hit the streets to talk with parents about the rise in cases in kids. John Ortiz was just finishing a game of tennis with his daughter, Natalie. It kind of stresses the importance of being vaccinated, especially for children, and, uh, and continue wearing a mask and, and using the precautions. To Natalie is 12. She was vaccinated in May. Despite being scared of the actual needle, she's happy she is. I'm not going to get sick as bad as other people might if they didn't get it. Dr. Fitch agrees, saying the surge of COVID cases right now just reiterates the need for vaccines for everyone, especially school-aged kids. We vaccinate for rare things all the time, and so I think it is worthwhile vaccinating Dr. Fitch said that he expects to see a rise in flu and RSV cases as kids come back from winter break and head back to the classroom. He adds those can both lead to hospitalizations as well. So that should further prove the case that parents should get their kids vaccinated. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Lee, thank you for that. We all know that COVID-19 can impact the classroom, but as of right now, Alamo Colleges, Texas A&M San Antonio, and UTSA plan to have a normal start to their spring semesters. Meanwhile, Our Lady of the Lake University, St. Mary's University, and the University of the Incarnate Word are monitoring for any changes. But over at Trinity University, yeah, changes there already happening. The school extending its winter break by two and a half weeks after seeing a rise in cases in their campus community. Employees at Trinity University are going to need to work from home until January 17th, and both students and employees have to prove that they've received their booster shots or they have to get tested every single week. Sticking with Trinity University, their men's basketball team was all set to play the University of the Incarnate Word tomorrow. That will not be happening now because of the COVID-19 concerns. UIW says the concerns are within Trinity's program and still no word yet on a makeup date for the canceled game. UIW plans to host Dallas Christian College on Sunday. COVID-19 also impacting the silver and black tonight. They were supposed to play against the Miami Heat today, but the Heat could not fulfill the number of players needed for tonight's tip off. For Spurs fans, it's a reminder the pandemic is still here. Uh, it makes me feel like it's not over yet. I mean, I thought we crossed that line a while ago, but obviously we're not. So, you know, probably time to mask up or get vaccinated again or something along those lines. It's a bad deal for all of us that we love sports, but we kind of saw it coming, you know. Our Larry Ramirez is following this story very closely for us tonight. He'll have more on that coming up a little bit later in sports.
All right, so for those of you who need to get vaccinated or boosted, you can do that tomorrow. The Alamo Dome is going to open back up for its drive through vaccine clinic. That's happening from noon to 8 p.m. tomorrow. It's then going to close on Friday for New Year's Eve. You can also check your local pharmacy to get the COVID vaccine. And we have a lot to talk about weather wise. We had a record high temperature today of 85 degrees. However, our first freeze is just around the corner. Our first official freeze in San Antonio, that is. Much cooler weather on the way for the second half of your weekend. We'll talk about that cold front and what it means for temperatures coming right up. Thank you, Adam, and we are just a few days away from 2022, but tonight we are taking a moment to take a peek into the past. The story being a west side welding business turning 100 years old. It's next on the Night Beat. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm. Hi, I'm Tony Garzavale with the Gomez Law Firm. And on behalf of the Gomez Law Firm, we'd like to wish everybody in the San Antonio community and surrounding areas a happy holidays and a happy new year and give a special thank you to the men and women in uniform. Thank you for all the sacrifices you make for our freedom. All new on the night beat, their legacy helping build San Antonio over the past century. Tonight, we take a look at a West Side business that just marked its 100th anniversary. Really cool stuff. So Cardona Welding Shop on South Brazos has seen five generations of welders. The night team's Patty Santos gives us a peek into the past, and it's all part of our series, History Untold. They came from Mexico. What they did was more blacksmith work. Cardona Welding Shop started as a blacksmith shop in September 1921. The original was Guadalupe Cardona. That was my husband's grandfather. And then uh, Martin Cardona was my husband's dad. He's the original. And then from Martin Cardona, and it was Richard Cardona and my husband. Juan Cardona. Guadalupe Cardona saw a need in San Antonio and with his know-how, business took off. His business grew and moved, but only by a few blocks, always remaining on the west side. In the 80s, under Juan Cardona, the business expanded. My husband went to school, learned, went to the army, they learned welding. He started, you know, because mainly he was blacksmith. That's what the job was. Cardona Welding earned a good reputation beyond Bear County. They would come from little ranchitos, you know, like Pleasanton, Poteet, Floresville, uh, New Braunfels, Austin, Fort Worth, people that knew about him. Even continuing to do blacksmith jobs until about 2019, when both Johnny Cardona and his fourth generation prodigy, John Jr., passed away. In the community, they will tell you, please don't close the shop. And I said, why now? Because they said it's like the Alamo of the West Side. Because it's historical, they said it's a landmark. A daughter, Elizabeth Rodriguez, is helping her mom, Lorraine Cardona, continue the legacy until the next generation of Cardonas are ready to take the helm of the West Side business. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. How cool. Very cool. Congratulations to them on 100 years in business. Wow. Let's take a live look outside. Sky 12, high over the Alamo Dome. A big game going on inside there tonight. Should be nice weather for folks as they walk back to their hotels and get to their cars and head back wherever they're going, Adam. Yeah, they're not going to feel a chill in the air, I'll tell you that. And the folks from uh, Oregon, they've uh, been battling some snow and colder temperatures up their way, so they're probably enjoying what we have out there right now. All right, let's take a look at our temperatures today. 85 was our high. That's two degrees warmer than the record. So we beat the old record by two degrees. Del Rio 85, Pleasanton topped out at 83, New Braunfels a high of 84. Now watch what happens here in the days ahead. We're still right near 80 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow through Saturday, you know, give or take a few degrees. By Sunday in the afternoon, the warmest will get 53. That strong cold front hits Saturday night. So let's talk about everything, starting with temperatures and the colder air that's off to the north and when it's going to make it our way. Right now, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, near 50 degrees. That's where we have some drier air in place. We'll get to that dry line and what it means for fog in just a moment, but let's finish off with temperatures here. Notice Amarillo, 38, Lub Lubbock at 49. Cooler air to the north of us, but significantly cooler once you get to the Canadian border and points northward. I mean, Bismarck, North Dakota right now at two below International Falls. 
10 below and the jet stream just to the north of us and the jet stream, especially this time of year, the polar jet here delineates the colder air to the north from the warmer or at least relatively warmer air to the south. You get up into Canada, we're 24 below in Saskatoon, 26 below Stony Rapids, Yellowknife at 36 below. There's the core of the cold air and the core of that cold air is going to stay to the north of us. It, it is going to plunge down into the upper Midwest and parts of the Great Lakes, but we're just going to get clipped by this colder air mass. It's going to be a significant temperature drop, but we're not talking a big deep freeze or a prolonged period of cold weather. Saturday ahead of the front we will st still make it to 82 degrees, but then temperatures fall off Saturday night. Notice the morning temperatures 35 Sunday morning. So down into the 30s to start your Sunday by Monday. I'm anticipating our first freeze. Katie and I have been predicting about 31 degrees for Monday morning, and that would be our first official freeze at the airport in San Antonio. Our average first freeze is the last days of November, so obviously we're a little behind the average. Now, let's talk about dew points. Some of us getting some relief out there, especially Bernie, Rio Medina, Hondo, Castroville, Hill Country. A break from the mugginess, dew points in the 40s, but it's still sticky. Randolph, Converse area, Stinson, Pleasanton, Seguin, and points eastward. That's because the West Texas dry line paid us a visit today, stalled out roughly along I-35. And where we have the drier air to the west of it, we're going to have a clear sky tonight and no fog. However, east of I-35 in that muggier air, we're likely to have another bout of morning fog. And our, I think our future cast handles this very nicely and picks up on that fog developing along the coastal plain and moving inland through the night. But I don't expect it to be as problematic as the past several mornings, mainly just in some locations east of I-35. Everybody gets rid of the humidity by Saturday. So tomorrow the humidity comes back in place. It's sticky Thursday and Friday. Saturday, humidity drops. Sunday and Monday, very dry air with dew points down in the teens for most of us. So if you're uh, susceptible to dry skin or chapped lips, get ready for Sunday and Monday with that dry air. I want to talk about our pattern here. Big dip in the upper level flow over California and a lot of moisture coming on shore with that. And this is part of the disturbance that's going to kick up that cold front that's going to be moving through Saturday night. I wish I could tell you it's going to bring us moisture and some needed rainfall. It's just not in the works. So tomorrow, a mixture of sun and clouds, making it up to near 80 degrees. New Year's Eve on Friday will still be near 80, more of the same, but in the evening hours, you can dress however you want and we'll be near 70 degrees and a little bit of humidity in the air. So unseasonably warm and muggy for New Year's Eve as we ring in the new year. Saturday making it to 82, then the cold front hits. Later on Saturday, the wind's going to pick up. We'll have some gusts of 40 miles per hour all the way through Sunday morning. And then there's that drop in temps. 53 a high on Sunday, only 58 on Monday, but it's a brief cool down. All right, thank yeah. you, Adam. But we're going to feel that. Right. <laughs> so Larry is here right now. Let's have some fun. All right, yes. so Micah Parsons from yes. Cowboys. He's got a nickname for one of his teammates. Yes, and Micah has a nickname himself, and he says no one else can have that nickname. He's the lion, and he likes to hunt. He says he's a hunter. Well, he also has a nickname now for Trayvon Diggs, his ball-hawking DB. It's a pretty good one. Plus, as you probably heard, the Spurs game tonight has been postponed. Coming up. We've seen bowls, douse coaches, and mayonnaise, Cheez-Its, et cetera. I'm wondering what you would think about a tequila bath, specifically a rock and roll tequila bath. Uh, that'd be okay. <laughs> what, what's the administration going to do, fire me? <laughs> so, <laughs> Oklahoma head coach Bob Stoops would gladly welcome a tequila bath if one was offered in big board sports. He's not the only one. The NBA postponed the Heat Spurs game tonight at the AT&T Center as COVID concerns and injuries left Miami without the league minimum eight players to suit up. This becomes the 10th NBA game postponed this season. The Spurs say tickets and parking passes for tonight's game will be valid for the rescheduled game, which will be announced at a later date. The Spurs held shoot around this morning preparing to face the Heat, but knowing anything can happen. We went through film this morning and saw they had um, a lot of guys out for sure. Um, even some guys that played last night um, aren't in there. 
rotation anymore today due to the protocol. But, um, I mean, there's kind of just how the year has been so far. Um, you don't know it. It could be even different tonight uh, when we get to the arena. So, we just got to continue to focus on the game plan. Uh, we control, we control. Miami hosted Washington last night with eight players and they won the game, but today was a different story. After testing, three more players entered the NBA's COVID health and safety protocols with Gabe Vincent, PJ Tucker, and Zylan Cheatham joining three teammates who were already on the list. Add in six injured players and two COVID-19 replacement players, and Miami was still left with seven players, one short of the league minimum. Miami is dealing with a serious COVID outbreak. You're trying to keep everybody healthy, keep everybody safe. Uh, you're trying to manage the unpredictable uh, every single day. Uh, you know, if anything, I think we're just that that part of it has been normalized. Um, the uh, unpredictability of every single day, you just have to accept that that's what it's going to be like, you know, for a while. Uh, and the whole league is is adjusting to it. Cheatham and Tucker must now quarantine in San Antonio after receiving their test results this morning. So the Spurs will play at the Grizzlies Friday night, the start of a seven game road trip. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott was named NFC Offensive Player of the Week. He passed for 330 yards and four touchdowns in the boys' 56-14 blowout win against Washington last Sunday. Meanwhile, Cowboys rookie linebacker Micah Parsons, a.k.a. the Lion, gave cornerback Trayvon Diggs a nickname. Diggs leads the NFL with 11 interceptions. Trey came over and I said, and you know, he's mentioning things. I was like, nah, Trey, you're an eagle, bro. You're in the league of your own. And he's like, eagle? I was like, yeah, eagles only fly with other eagles. No other bird can reach their altitude. And, you know, so Trey's the eagle and I'm the lion. So he owns the air and I own the ground. And that's all we got to do. Love it. Winners of two straight for the first time this season. The Texans will next play at the 49ers. Rookie quarterback Davis Mills says the atmosphere of the team is much better these days. Obviously, winning is a lot better than losing. So um, I guess there's just a morale in the locker room that everyone's um, excited to keep this win streak alive, keep uh, going and attacking each week with that um, relentless attitude. The Sooners and Ducks had a blast this week after the break. The Valero Alamo Bowl between Oklahoma and Oregon is going down right now, but due to TV rights, we can't air any highlights, but we can show you some of the fun both teams had this week. Uh, OU's proud to be here and anxious for a, for a good few days. Everybody's excited about being here, ready to get everything started. I know we're in the Longhorn State, but I don't see I don't see very much orange around here. Thank y'all for coming out, and I uh, can't wait to play in front of y'all. Go Ducks! Check out that score for you. Oklahoma's leading Oregon 37-11 in the third. We'll have more tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Typically, that game's a lot closer. Maybe there's interesting things ahead. Uh, there probably is, <laughs> yes. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> we'll be right back. Tomorrow morning in parts of the hill country we will dip down into the upper 40s. Those will be the coolest spots and keep in mind even in San Antonio our average morning low is 41 but we'll be 58 in the morning fog east of I-35 by the afternoon. We're looking at sunshine and right near 80 degrees but you get south of San Antonio into the 80s. Carrizo Springs, Pleasanton 84, Catula about 87. And it's going to be very similar Friday and Saturday. Ringing in the new year at midnight about 70 degrees. Bit muggy and temperatures above average. Saturday afternoon will be in the low 80s. Then the cold front hits. We're down close to freezing Sunday morning and likely hitting it Monday morning. Let's get ready for that. Have a wonderful night. Good night.